Hi, I'm Ray, G4NSJ, and we're back to the Nano VNA again. Do you remember last time I showed you how to check the SWR on an aerial, find the resonant frequency of an aerial? Uh, well, this time what I want to do is see that <laughs> you're thinking, what is that's a tuned circuit, or it was that was a parallel tuned circuit. I've actually taken it a bit variable capacitor and a, a coil inductor. Right, you'll see L on diagrams, you'll see L and C. C capacitor, L is for inductor. I don't know why it's L, but it's inductor. It's probably Greek or Latin or something. Now, that is basically what you've got in here. This loop aerial here, all right, is that part of the capacitor. The oscillator, uh, the coil is in there is that rear half of the capacitor so the two track together I've done all this on other videos so I won't go into that too much what I'm going to do is show you how to hook up the nano VNA to find the frequency the resonant frequency of well both of those tuned circuits this is a tuned circuit the coil and the capacitor and the oscillator is the coil and the capacitor so what we're going to do is see if we can use this to read the actual frequency that it is set to. Why, or say, why bother to do that? Because back in the 60s, I used to build pirate radio transmitters for medium wave, and I used to use crystal controlled oscillator because I could never get my head around this. I could get my head around it, but it was winding the, the number of turns. How many turns do you want for, say, one meg in the, it's the Morse code in the middle of medium wave? One meg. How many turns do you want here? I haven't got a clue. There were things like a grid dip oscillator around, uh, which I didn't have. They were quite expensive and I didn't know how to use it anyway. So now, if you want to make a tuned circuit, it's dead easy. What we're going to do, I'm using these leads. All right, I've got these two that I made up. The SMA to crocodile clips. Okay, it's easier then. To, to clip onto things. For the initial setup, you'll have these two leads that you've got with the with the kit. Okay, these two leads on there like that. On here, to calibrate the thing, you put the open circuit one, press open. You put the short circuit one, press short. Put the 50 ohm load, press load. You then go to this one, put the 50 ohm load on this one, press isolate you then join these two together all right with a little coupler and you press through and then you press done and then if you want you can save that so that's how that's set up and now what i've done just to show you these two leads here go to each of the ports here the two blacks the two outers if you like of the the kayaks go together and that goes across your tuned circuit it's a parallel tuned circuit so you can put that uh, this is on this I mean this is a, an old bush radio long and medium wave radio I've got it switched to medium wave for this test you could put that across the variable capacitor depending on which gang it is you're doing so the chassis of the capacitor the aerial side or the oscillator side that's what we're doing that's how you set it all up now I'll show you the video clip of actually setting this up so while I'm tidying up here you can have a look at the video clip first of all we need to set this up so let's go here um, we want stimulus start we're going to go for say 100 kilohertz stop let's say 3 megs that'll do three megs we then go back calibrate reset it first of all then calibrate open so we're going to fit our open this is channel zero I'm doing this on okay channel zero open we're now going to do the short circuit one short sorry it's moving around a bit I've got the, the short coax leads on here then the 50 ohm load this is all on channel zero load 
Next one is isolation. So the 50 ohm load goes on channel one. Isolation to the 50 ohm load goes on channel one. Isolation. And now through. Through is where you join channel zero and channel one with the little coupler. So through, then done when you've disconnected everything and you can then save this somewhere. Well, I've already saved this in channel zero, so we'll come to that in a minute. So that's done. You then save that. You will also want, oh, I forgot to mention, you will also want to go to your display, the trace. Just have the blue trace, all right, which is channel one log mag. It should say in blue channel one log mag, just the blue trace. And that's it. We're now set up. The reason I set the stimulus uh, 100 kilohertz to 3 megs is because this is medium wave, so it gives it a nice sort of area to fit it. Um, I'm now going to connect the leads, connect it up to the chassis, and I've got notes all over the place because I always forget to tell people things. I've got all sorts here. Anyway, let's watch the next clip. That's where I connect this to the chassis, as I told you before how to do that. We're going to do the oscillator side first, all right? So that will be that coil under there and that gang there, the two double gang, dual gang capacitor. So we're going to connect to the oscillator side. So basically two blacks joined together, those two across the oscillator side of the variable tuning capacitor. Right, let's have a look at that. Okay, here we are set up on the, the radio chassis. I've got the dial pointer right up the high frequency end of medium wave. Okay, and minimum here. And it says 2.043 megs. So now if I tune the dial up to the low frequency end, you can see that moving. Let's just see what we've got there. 1.724 megs, keep going. That's about halfway on the medium wave dial. Let's see what we've got there. And that's 1.318. Right up the I've got a squeaky capacitor there, variable capacitor. Right up the top. And it's 999 kilohertz. Well, we'll say one meg right up the top. That was the oscillator side. Now you might be thinking, how come medium wave goes down to two point something megs? We'll come to that in a minute. We're now going to do the aerial side, okay, which is that loop aerial there and the other half of the variable capacitor. I hope you haven't given up. You haven't gone down the pub. You? you can't. They're closed. <laughs> You've got to stay here and watch. This now is the aerial side, all right? The, the aerial tuned circuit, the tuned loop side. That is the high frequency end, which is 1.579. I'll come up to the other way. You can see the trace moving there up to the lowest frequency. Minimum there. 535 kilohertz. Now you're thinking, how come they're different? Surely we want the, the two to track together when you tune up the aerial circuit on. Let's, uh, let's, in fact, let's do that now. Let's tune the aerial circuit. Uh, 999, nine, nine. so that's a meg. We'll say it's a meg, all right? And that's in the middle of the medium wave band. If I now go to the oscillator side, 1,500 kilohertz. Let's go to the oscillator side. The minimum is 1.463 megs. So why is that? Now, okay, I shall tell you. When this medium wave radio is tuned to one meg the pointer says one meg 300 meters all right the oscillator is in fact running at 1.465 kilohertz the if frequency of this is 465 kilohertz so the oscillator runs at 1.465 minus the if which is 465 so you get one meg i'm not going into all this because I've done it on other videos. I'm not here to tell you about how a superhead radio works. But basically, the signal comes into the aerial. 
okay, uh, and the oscillator goes into the mixer, the oscillator goes into the mixer, the two mix, and you end up with the IF frequency. I've done all this before, but 465 kilohertz. Now on there, I said 463. Okay, it's it's slightly out. I probably wasn't tuned in properly, and I've got leads everywhere, so it's not going to be completely accurate. But that's not bad. So the oscillator is running on 1465 kilohertz. Okay, minus the IF. The dial reads, which is 465, the dial reads 1000 kilohertz, a meg. Okay, that's what it is. That's why the two aren't on the same frequency. The oscillator will be the IF frequency different from the aerial one. The aerial one, of course, has to be on the frequency we want. So, you know, when we tune on here, we tune to one meg on the nano VNA, it says one meg. That is the signal for coming in. That is the frequency that we want. What's that? Listen to all that. Honestly, apart from Morse code over there, there's so many noises. I've now got other stuff going on. Right, there's something else. Shall I show you this or not? Hang on. As if by magic, my loop aerial appears. I made that ages ago. A friend of mine made the wooden frame. I made a bigger one of these. I've got it stashed away. It's not in here. A huge one for medium wave. This is medium wave only, not long wave. Basically, it's a tuned circuit, variable capacitor and the inductor. The inductor, as with this, forms the aerial. Let's get rid of that chassis. Forms the aerial. So that is the aerial. And the idea of this on medium wave is it's directional. So you can null out interference. Anyway, I've made, I've, I think I've done a video on loop aerials. So what you do, this, right, does exactly what that one does. Half of that one. Okay, it's, this is a tuned loop. It's a tuned circuit. And what you can do, I probably won't do it now because it'll, you will really be driven to drink. You'll be bored. But I have put the Nano VNA across here and it's brilliant you can see the coverage from one end to the other it covers the whole of the medium wave band so i won't do that at the moment because it is boring this is what i started i was going to show you this but i thought well, then what's the point there's a tuned circuit in that uh, this is a tuned circuit it's got cold so i've got a cup of tea and put my jacket on this is my dark box because the, the nano VNA, you know, the screen with all the lights and everything, it just reflects. So, so I stick it in there. <laughs> right, I've got some notes. Yeah, the um, Superhet radio I showed you, where it was over there, uh, the chassis. The reason that the oscillator runs at a higher frequency than the frequency on the dial, well, we'd, rather than lower, that's what I'm saying, it runs at a higher frequency because take, for example, Radio 4 long wave or 198 kilohertz, so it's 200 kcs. Um, if you've got, you've got 200 plus 465, okay, so the oscillator runs higher, it'll run on 645 kilohertz. If you try and run it lower, 200 kcs minus 465, well, it doesn't work, does it? You've got to go down down in frequency to zero DC you then have to go the other side I wonder what's the other side imagine if you tune down to to zero kilohertz and then go the other side start going up again perhaps there's a, a universe uh, a parallel universe and that's where the Martians communicate what am I talking about sorry carried away then um, you could say well why not use a frequency counter on a radio I've got one up there or a oscilloscope stick that on it uh, because you've got to have the radio switched on then, and also the nano VNA has got many uses. Uh, you know, the frequency counter will read out the frequency, uh, but that's about it. The nano VNA, you can check your aerials, w, SWR, all that sort of thing. Um, on the frame area I showed you, uh, I've made a video all about that. You'll find it somewhere on YouTube or on my website. What I've done with that is uh, the turns, or I think there's, there's six or eight turns or something with the uh, parallel with the capacitor to connect it the two wires I had to connect it that is a one turn loop on there and the reason I have a coupling loop is because you don't want to damp the tuned circuit if you start direct correcting to the air in itself you know, the loop air in itself 
you could you, what you call damp it and muck it around. That's why you have a separate coupling coil. You can connect directly to it, but it's best just have another coil. I was in this video going to mention ferrite toroids. Now, Roy, hello Roy, if you're watching, friend of mine. Um, we were chatting about this the other day on the radio, ferrite toroids, common mode currents, common mode chokes and things like that, that you can all, it's fascinating, look at on the VNA. Uh, but I'm going to make a separate video for that. So there's going to be at least three videos on this uh, Nano VNA because there's so much to talk about it. So that's it. If I've made any mistakes, apologies. No doubt you will let me know, as people always do. Well, that's not right. You got that wrong. <laughs> people do that. They comment. What was it a chap said the other day? Or I can't remember now. Or one of my videos moaned at me. He did. <laughs> so there we are. Anyway, um, yes. And what I was saying about using the Nano VLA on a chassis like I was, you don't have to have the radio turned on. That was the point. Uh, you know, you can make all sorts of adjustments and fiddle about with it without it even turned on. One thing, don't stick RF up the Nano VNA. Don't transmit into it or put any RF or voltages into those ports. Stuff comes out of it, doesn't want to go in. And just one last thing out of interest, which I did yesterday, the screen was very dusty. So I got a cloth, did that, give it a good old clean up, like that, as you do on your shirt. <laughs> And I turned it on, got the screen up with all the writing on, it wouldn't do any more. It locked. So I turned it off. I couldn't get it to work. What it was, and it says on the back, keep away from static discharge. I'd kind of, like when you do your hair with a comb, zzz, I'd static charged it. And the thing wouldn't work. I thought I'd wrecked it anyway. After the charge eventually disappeared, I took three or four minutes then it worked again. So if you're going to clean it, just do it carefully. <laughs> right. Uh, you've had enough, no doubt. So have I, so I'm going to have my tea. Thanks for watching as always. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.